Star Fox. Star Fox! Star Fox 64. So many people love it. But why? Hello, I'm Rock the Jake, and welcome to Game and Think, the show that brings the lesser heard thoughts of a gamer to the front of your attention. One of my favorite games from the N64 era is Star Fox 64. I remember playing it like crazy as a kid, and subsequently rubbing my thumb raw on that control stick. So many years later, I still play it a lot on the Wii, and it came to my mind recently to ask, analyze, and answer this thought. What are the main techniques and elements that make Star Fox 64 so fun? Now with a question like that, there's bound to be a flurry of answers. I'm personally narrowing it down to just five key things that I feel keep people coming back to the game over and over. Some of you may agree, some of you may think my choices are odd, but these five things are the ones that I feel are most important. These five are in no particular order except for the last one, which is the most important. So what's the first item on the list? Well, it only seems fitting to start with the laser. The mechanic of the laser is something that is both immediately gratifying and sustainably entertaining. To get rapid fire from it, you don't need to press the A button like a drummer doing blast beats. I can't freaking do it. You just have to press the button at your own pace and the laser will rapidly fire in spurts or constantly. It's a small thing, but it becomes very useful later in the game when tons of enemies are attacking from everywhere. The upgrades you get for the laser feel substantial and fun, especially the blue laser. The charge laser is also very rewarding to use because of its power and quick charge. The next element to talk about is the vehicle movement. I'd personally wager to say that the R-Wing is one of the best battle spaceships ever invented because of its agility, power, and defensive measures. One could probably bring up other great ships, such as the X-Wing in Star Wars Rogue Squadron, and it is, in fact, a great ship to pilot. But it doesn't have the same maneuverability that the R-Wing has. The A-Wing does have great maneuverability, but it lacks sufficiently in the defensive department. That's one of the good things about Rogue Squadron, the ships are balanced. But in Star Fox, you only control one ship, so it has to be able to stand up to anything. Controlling the R-Wing feels really good at pretty much all times. U-turns and somersaults are great mechanics, and of course, the barrel roll is an invaluable tool to keep one's defenses up. The Landmaster is also a very fun vehicle to use. Though shooting can be a little frustrating or difficult because of the design, hovering and dodging are unique to the vehicle, and they look and feel great. And to round it all off, there's the Blue Marine. While it is a very sluggish machine, it does have the benefit of still being able to use the barrel roll, while also having unlimited missiles at your disposal. Now if only those stupid, dumb fish would move next day! The third thing to talk about is the story, which helps factor into its replayability. The game itself is a very fun space fighter slash on rail shooter, and the story gives the game enough meaningful weight without being overbearing on the actual gameplay. The branching paths allow for different story elements to occur, like meeting Bill or Cat and having them help you out in future levels. And of course, there's the multiple endings. It can be fun to fight Andros as either the creepy robot head or the creepier brain and eyes. For kids. Nonetheless, the story, even if you've experienced it a hundred times, always calls you back to play for that hundred and first time. Moving on, we have the lovely voice acting. Even though the dialogue could get a little cheesy at times, Bow before the great Andron. The acting was pretty much always spot on. You can tell from listening that the actors really got into their roles and gave it their best. And the great thing is, it still shows to this day. Think about it. Would still be as fun to quote today if Rick May, the voice of Peppy, hadn't said it the way he did? Voice acting can make or break a game sometimes, and while I don't think it would have broken this game at all, it definitely only added to its fun. And now we have our last element, the ability to make choices. Now when one thinks of a game where the ability to choose a path or action is a big deal, one usually thinks of Mass Effect or Heavy Rain, which do the multiple choice mechanic very well. But as with many things, it didn't start there. In the first level of the game, you have a multitude of quick choices to be made. Whether or not to save Slippy, or Falco, I guess I should be thankful. Yeah, you should be! Whether or not to fly through the arches or just jet above. Even whether or not to choose the laser upgrade or the bomb. The first level very quickly and immediately helps the player learn that game-altering choices can be made on the fly. And even though they are quick, the player still has full control and consciousness to choose. Later levels let you choose to go to Sector Y or Medio, and if you should quickly kill the robot in Sector X or not. Of course, one of the most famous and fun choices in the game is probably the Train Switches segment. I mean, hey, if you could essentially turn on a kill switch to beat the boss instead of awkwardly trying to shoot away at an agile enemy, which would you choose? The choices the player makes in the game alter the way the story is told and offers multiple differences through various playthroughs. Now the reason I mention these five things is because they deal with how a player feels during and even after playing. 
if a game makes you feel good about what you're playing, you're more inclined to play and revisit it. Now that's not to say that a game that makes you feel down or depressed won't make you want to replay it. If you mess up saving someone or yourself in heavy rain, you may want to try to replay it just to get a different outcome. But the basic fact is that positivity breeds positive reactions. Star Fox 64 is so replayable because its gameplay feels so good. Its story adds well to the gameplay, the voice acting complements the story, and the choices you can make in the game make everything feel good and pan out well. But the great thing is that whichever route you take, it'll leave you feeling victorious and ready for more. There's a reason why this game has such a beloved legacy, and I'm pretty sure I've only scratched the surface. People still love it, and it shows since Nintendo released a remake for the 3DS and is working on a new Star Fox title as we speak. But whether you're playing it with updated graphics and sound or you're playing it the old school way, Star Fox 64 is a game worthy of its accolades and of your time. Well, I've got to get going. I've got some thinking to do. Peace out. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like my thoughts about Star Fox? What would you add to the list? Please let me know by writing about it in the comments below. If you like my stuff, please subscribe, and I hope you all have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you.